in here. But now let's talk about today's topic, which is making jeans. And um, I'm going basically to go through all the little details that are a part of jeans making and the things that I've learned along the way on how to really achieve that professional finish. Um, I became interested in that back in, I think, around 2009, where I sort of decided to up my uh, jeans making game. So I really went deep and, and studying ready to, to wear, ready to made jeans, um, including uh, these pair from Lee. So I just went deep and just examined every little tiny detail. And that sort of study also resulted in a blog series that I did back in 2009. And we're going to look a blast from the past here, which, and it looks like this. This is still up on my blog, thelastditch.com. And here I cover most of the steps that goes into making jeans. Now, I am the first to admit that um, I think the photo quality could have been better, but you have to remember that this was nine years ago. So there has definitely been, you know, some room for improvement since then. And I can also really recommend um, Heather Lou from Closet Case Pattern. She has done a wonderful tutorial on jeans making as well on a blog. And both the tutorials uh, that I showed you on my blog and the ones that she'd done is linked in the description section. So you can read more about that there because it's obviously a lot of uh, things that goes into jeans making and i'm really curious to hear about your experience with making jeans do you find it difficult do you find it easy and of course hit away with any type of questions that you have and also of course tips and corrections and whatever goes on in the chat here and uh, we're going to start off by talking one of the things that i think is super important when it comes to jeans making and that is picking the right fabric now at least here in Sweden, the selection of good quality denim fabric is an absolute disaster if you go into a regular fabric shop. And what I mean by that, I mean that the jeans uh, wash looks extremely blonde, very flat and nothing like the sort of jeans that you can buy in stores. And secondly, the quality is usually a bit thinner than the denim that you will find in red to red to wear jeans so those are two things and thirdly uh, it usually has too much licra so it does change the hand and if you look at the description of most regular jeans you will see that they usually have perhaps one two percentage of spandex but in a lot of um, fabric store denim it can be up to five percent and that definitely changes the hand and also it's quite common to have a lot of polyester as well now, obviously, if you want to do super stretchy like jeggings, then, of course, that is a good idea. But if you want to do regular denim jeans, you definitely need to be mindful of the content of spandex if you want to get that right sort of feeling. So that's my number one tip. Check the spandex context. And I will go out and limb say, unless you're making super stretchy jeans, a lower number is definitely much better than a higher number. Trust me on this one. And there are a lot of people now. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Kat. Hi, Heidi of all trades. And uh, so what happens for me is that for the, the couple of last products I've done, I've actually been having to travel to another country, namely Denmark, which isn't too far away from where I live, in order to find good denim from the garment industry. And I was there this weekend and I managed to score some really nice denim fabrics that I want to show you now and just give you an idea of what I mean. Um, <clears throat> This is the first one. I hope you can tell by the um, the lighting here. You can see now this is the sort of jeans fabric that I prefer. It has a slightly stubby surface. It's a little bit broken in. Now, obviously, when you buy red to made jeans, they will have a lot of treatments after the jeans has been sewn to give that sort of worn out look. Now that will not be sort of achievable on on the fabric, so you have to do that afterwards. But what I like is a denim fabric that has a slightly, slightly worn surface and this ages really, really well. And I've used this kind of denim a couple of times before and it's aged extremely well. And it has, I think this one has 2% stretch, so you can see it's not much. This is perfect for straight leg jeans, obviously, and I think you could do stovepipe jeans as well. Uh, and what I like about this is that it's firm and it's a 12 uh, ounces. Usually denim is, is I think, around... 10 or to 12 ounces right for most one i think there are uh, even heavier denim as well if you're more of a hardcore um, jeans maker then i think uh, even thicker more stable denim is desirable but for me i like my 
jeans is a bit, a bit tight and I also want spandex these days because I find it much more comfortable and forgiving to my body than the non-stretch jeans. So this one is a great fabric I hope and think and I also bought another one which is um, a remake from the um, there's a Dutch company called Gistor Raw that makes kind of designer jeans in, in the higher price level, I think. And uh, I also found um, a fabric from them. Uh, you can't quite see, it looks a bit bluish on the screen, but it's actually um, a bit of a black, navy, grey tone. So it's a little less um, bluish than the first one. Again, this one has a little bit more stretch, right? So I'm going to probably use these for a more... Um, tight fitting jeans and the other ones for more straight fitting jeans um last no last year but two years ago i i bought a similar fabric from gee store raw in in copenhagen and i made these pair of jeans and the fabric looked just like i showed you uh but you can see how nicely it ages because it's such a wonderful quality so actually you, you could almost think that uh, I've made some sort of treatment afterwards, but it's not, it's just the wear and tear of the fabric, but it looks like the fabric that I've shown you in the beginning. So that's another sign of good quality denim. Now, if you have any sources on where to find great denim that online that people can buy, please tell us in the chat because I'm not sure how the situation is in other countries, perhaps it's much better, obviously it's better in Denmark than it is in Sweden, but I still think that finding good denim can be a little bit of a tricky thing because it seems like the denim that is sold in fabric stores is not actually the sort of denim that is used in the garment industry. I could be wrong about that, but I would love to get your feedback on it. And uh, Therese also wants to know where in Copenhagen that I bought the fabrics. Well, I bought them in two places. This one... Um, from Gee Store Raw, I bought at Skipper Stoffer, which is an amazing fabric store. If you go to Copenhagen, you need to visit that one because it, it pretty much only sells um, fabric cost offs from uh, high end designers. So you will find, you know, Balencia, uh, Paul Smith, uh, Oscar de la Renta, I think, Prada, Chanel, um, and a lot of other fabric remains from high end designers. And now, things in Denmark is super expensive, especially for our Swedes, but uh, the prices at Skipper Stoff is actually not that bad, especially if you consider what an amazing quality you get. So um, there is actually um, a guide on my blog about shopping fabric in Copenhagen. I, I will remember linking to that afterwards, but if you search my blog, Fabric Shopping Copenhagen, you will find a guide to all the fabric stores in the city centre, which I also given them grades, and this one I've given the highest grades. And the second blue denim I bought at the um, Wiedeberg, which is a shop that sells uh, mostly tailoring. And this one was a bit too expensive, to be honest. It gave me a bit of a pain in the stomach, but uh, still a very good uh, shop to visit if you're in Copenhagen. And uh, we've got some suggestions here from the chat. This seems to be a similar problem in other countries. Laura says fashion... Denim fabrics are hard to find in NC, I suppose that's North Carolina, right? And uh, the quality in Joanne Fabric, which is a big uh, American fabric store, is so-so. Looks very similar, I would say, then to the Swedish situation. So you definitely, my tip is to don't be tricked by something called denim. So it, it doesn't look and doesn't feel like the denim that you are using, or that you're wearing on your industrial jeans then it will not end up, it will look a bit home soon. That's just how it is. I mean, sometimes we don't have a choice. I mean, it's a luxury to be able to find good denim, apparently, which is a bummer, especially now considering how jeans making has become so popular, especially, I think, to um, the closet case uh, file, uh, closet case patterns, which was made really, you know, blockbuster jeans patterns are sold a bunch. And I know there are a lot of other brands too, I think, um, some male jeans as well from is it thread theory theory i think of some jeans patterns so there are lots of things out there now if you want to make your own jeans and uh that was about fabric so that is the number one thing you need to consider and now we're going to talk more about what you need to know about stitches and stuff and we're going to find the jeans here that i have now, Lee Jeans is one of my favorite brands uh, for two reasons. One is that they fit my body reasonably well. 
and also because I like how they do their stitching. And when you're making jeans, you're basically using a, a variety of dis different stitches. Um, obviously, a regular straight stitch will work very well. And for decorative purposes, I just like to use a regular jean thread. This one is for Guterman. I can highly recommend that brand. I like this sort of matte golden color. I don't like the uh, two orange jean threads. I find them a bit brash. And again, you know, they kind of look a bit homemade. But obviously, you can use other colors as well. I've seen a lot of uh, black and dark blue and pale. So there are a lot of options if you want to make your own jeans, depending on your own preferences. Now, at least I don't use jeans thread in the bobbin. Uh, I use regular thread in the bobbin. So I use um, navy blue thread in the bobbin if I'm doing navy blue jeans, just to make sure that it matches the fabric instead of um, using jeans thread. And the, the main reason for that is that the bobbin is, is set, uh, the tension in the bobbin is set for regular sewing thread. So if you start uh, mixing <laughs> this thick thread, you will probably end up with thread jam. And then you have to, in order to avoid that, you need to loosen the tension in the bobbin. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get back the correct tension afterwards. So I definitely recommend that you either use a second bobbin for thick thread or that you use um, a bobbin, uh, you mark uh, the tension of the regular stitch with a pen so that you can revert the adjustment after you're done. But I definitely still <laughs> prefer, if that's my personal experience, I would love to know how you do it, but I prefer to use regular thread in the bobbin because to be honest, it doesn't, it causes a lot of problems not doing it and it doesn't really show. That said, um, in industrial jeans making, it's actually quite common to use the chain stitch, which is basically the single needle stitch that you have on a cover stitch machine if you own one of those and uh, those cover stitch uh, stitches chain stitch i mean are usually done on the um, waistband so it looks like a regular straight stitch on the outside but then on the inside there is a chain so you can actually use if you have a cover stitch machine you can actually use that to create a finish that is super similar to ready to wear jeans and uh, I'm currently working on a book about cover stitching and I will talk more extensively about this technique and how to use that when you're making jeans as well which is also one of the reasons I'm, I'm making jeans this fall because I'm going to use those products for the book and uh, these are the the chain is usually used at the waistband sometimes to stitch the joke and also on some some jeans they also use the chain stitch to to hem and apparently it is said that if you use a chain stitch it will be easier to get this sort of wavy ridges you know that is the the signature of uh, the hem jeans that is industrial hem but i'm not 100 percent sure because the um, the jeans that i'm having holding my hands it's actually just done with a regular straight lock stitch i think it doesn't chain stitch and you can see it still has these this formation so I don't think it's necessary to use the chain stitch for that also a good thing to know about the chain stitch is it unravels quite easily so it's also secure to use a regular straight stitch when you're top stitching jeans and in order to top stitch your jeans um, in a nice and even way it can be kind of tricky especially if you have sec several rows of stitching um, I like to use the press foot let me see if I can find it here I probably lost it somewhere in the mess uh, here it is. Most sewing machine either comes with or you can buy this uh, presser foot which has a blade in the middle. So you line that with the seam when you're top stitching which makes everything so much easier because you, you can just follow the, the seam with the blade here. And especially if you have a sewing machine where you can actually also move um, the needle position, this will be even easier to do. So I highly recommend that you get one of these if it's not included in your machine. And another way to, to stitch uh, the seams of a pair of jeans is to use flat felt seam. Now, I have actually not done that, but uh, Closet, Ca Closet Case File has done a tutorial on that as well. So if you check the description section, we'll find links to her tutorial series about jeans making, where she explains how to do the flat felt seam as well. But I have not tried that myself, so I don't really have too much to, to offer on that particular method. And we have got some tips now from uh, AC says, I buy my denim from Threadbare Fabrics online. So that's definitely worth checking out then. 
And um, also Laura says, I like Goodman Treads too. That is readily available in the state as well. That's really good to hear. It's because it's a fantastic brand. I've never been disappointed. And I tried to buy Goodman exclusively. And head, Heidi of All Trades says, Mood Fabrics Online has a great selection of denim. They also have clips explaining the fabric, the drape, the content, etc. That's super important because that's a tricky thing when you're buying online. You're not really sure what you're getting. And uh, Laurie says, I've heard a lot of YouTubers say to use regular thread in the bobbin when using top stitches. Well, I agree with those YouTubers for sure. And I've actually done a video about top stitching as well, where I talk more in depth about that and also show you different type of threads and, you know, the difference between them. When you're doing top stitching, you can achieve different effects. You can use, uh, there, there are several different thick threads you can use, and they look a bit different. So I'll talk more about that in that video. And uh, Sibona says, which Kudaman thread color do you think matches the closest to the original Louis, Levi's jeans? I don't own a Lee jeans, but I'm sure it's almost the same. Well, I think the thread that I'm holding in my hand currently, and I'm going to read the numbers now, because oh, I look a bit old here. The number is CA02776. CA02776. This one I think matches quite closely, but I know there's another one that is a bit more orangey, and perhaps that is this one is very similar to the Lee, but I think in my memory that Levi's jeans has a little bit more orange sheen, so it might be another color than this one. Uh, but for the Lee jeans, this is definitely, definitely the closest one. And how it goes in these days, I will only sew with denim that has some stretch in it for comfort. Absolutely. I was actually in the, one of the stores, the Skipper store, they had some beautiful uh, non-stretch denim with, uh, you know, the decorative selvage, which is obviously beautiful detail, you know, with the selvage that is woven with the contrasting tread. But... It had zero denim and I knew I would absolutely hate sitting down in those jeans. And I had to be honest with myself. Yeah, the fabric is wonderful, but, you know, comfort really rules when it comes to, you know, your makes. And I don't want to live in that <laughs> situation where I feel really uncomfortable each time I put my jeans on. So I'm definitely one of those people who love my stretch as well. And that was thread and um, how you do that and also on the inside if we look at how the industrial jeans are made for overcasting it's usually done using uh, the uh, three thread wide overlock thread so if you have a serger you can actually do the exact same stitch you can also use the through two thread flat lock for similar effect and perhaps even the three thread flat lock but those are the ones that are most common. And obviously you can also, if you do a flat fell seam, you don't really need to um, to think too much about, you know, overcasting. But if you have a surgery, you can definitely achieve a very professional result on the inside, just using the three thread wide overlock stitch. I think I said that right. Um, <clears throat> so that's what the stitching things. And talking about another thing which is important when it comes to making jeans is the zipper application and uh, if you check my blog and also done a video about that is how you you uh, so um a jeans zipper because that's a little bit different than a regular trouser zipper and uh it has a fly in the back it looks like this sometimes it's a bit neater sometimes it looks like this and i'm going to show you now just shortly the principles of jeans insertment i hope i can explain this well but you can also check out the uh, video done about that uh, and also the blog post and i'm sure that cluster case files explain this really well and also angela kane has videos about this as well so there are a lot of different resources um, on how you do that so i'm going to put that out now so you can see yeah here is some photos from my blog and um one of the tricks when it comes to attaching the zipper is that you can see that the top stitching is actually done in two separate moves. So what you do here is that you, after you attach the zipper, you stitch the first line and then you close it by folding the, um, the zipper fly shield right uh, back and you attach that with the, the lower part of the stitch and then you do this this bar tacking thing. So that is one of the things that is a bit different if you compare that to a pair of a, a regular zipper. So 
that takes a little bit, you know, to get your head around. And um, the sort of bar tacking that is on jeans, it's, I think it's done by a special machine, usually in the industrial, but it, you can just use a narrow zigzag to achieve a similar finish on that. Uh, so that's one of the, the things to know about applying the zipper that it's done a bit also it's done on the flat so you attach the zipper before you stitch the crotch seam so it's again a bit different uh, no I mean you you attach the flat but before you stitch the inseam I meant so it's, it's a bit different in that regard as well and when it comes to brands of jean zipper that I had recommend I'm a big fan of the YKK brand and I think that too is readily 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 available in uh, in many countries of the world I noticed that the Lee jeans also made using this brand and uh, so please tell me if you know that it's available in other countries as well great zipper and I really like to use uh, metal zipper with a sort of brass tone just to achieve that um, normal sort of um, finishing that you can find on industrial made jeans so that's also really good to to check out get get a, uh, invest in good zippers because that's usually not too expensive and we all know how annoying it is when uh, we buy something ready <laughs> ready made and the zipper breaks and you can't wear the garment <laughs> because and as we all know as home series that uh, fixing a zipper is like the biggest nightmare because usually it's enclosed in about a billion different seams so it's it's not something most of us will do voluntarily replacing zipper in a pair of um, jeans or a jacket or something like that so definitely it's better to pay good money for the zipper uh, instead of having to do the fixing later on. and we have some um uh, more shout outs to the YKK brand they really like it and it's a top brand in USA as well and Kat says oh no St Stefan says do you cover button up flight construction yes I do I've actually done a tutorial about that as well it's not in the links below but if you uh, search button fly on my blog I will show how I use that based on a book uh, method that I found in a vintage book so I use that for a pair of shorts, but it's definitely applicable to jeans making as well so you can check that out too and also I think again that Heather Liu of Closet Case Files also have done a, a tutorial on how to add a button fly on jeans so there are two resources you can check out and hello Dudley from Croatia again we have a nice international following which is fantastic it's so nice and to have all these people coming and, and chatting about things like this like jeans making which is obviously a very fun topic and another thing I will address now is uh, how to do pockets. Now I have a great tip for that. Uh, if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to show you now. I'm just going to put out the, the slideshow here so I can make sure I do it right. And the trick in order to achieve a razor sharp jeans is that you should do something that is called the press template. And it looks like this. This is basically just a piece of cardboard that you cut to the size of the finished patch pocket. And then you just press around that and that will create absolutely super sharp uh, corners. So you don't have to worry about, you know, an uneven finish. And this is how uh, one of those press templates that I use looks like. Uh, I can I have those in several different sizes and I'm absolutely loving them I can I will never ever do a patch pocket again without using these press templates and even though some pockets uh, some jeans will have um, more rounded shape but they will work for that as well I've done round pockets using press templates so it's not really an issue uh, you will find the press template super useful and uh, once you've tried it, I don't think you will go back not to using it. It saves time and it achieves very nice and even finish. Plus, it doesn't cost anything. You just you can use like the uh, a pizza a pizza carton or whatever. I I've used just some regular stiff paper, so you can pretty much use anything that you have in your storage. It's it's a great little tool. And um, and another thing that is good to know is that on jeans sometimes uh on jeans sewing patterns they don't really use this method which is perhaps the most common one 
uh, when it comes to industrial made jeans and that is how they do the, the front pockets. As you can see, this looks a bit different than most sewing patterns uh, pockets. It's actually just folded like this. So the, um, you can see here the pocket pouch is actually just folded. So you basically sew like a rectangle. And I'm going to show you some pictures again now from my slides so you can see more in depth how that looks like. Uh, this is again a pic from my, um, the, the tutorial series I did back in 2009. And um, so what you do is that you <clears throat> first, uh, you just do like a rectangular piece and it's open at the round where the, the pocket opening is. And then of course you attach a patch so that the fabric of the lining won't show through from the outside. And when you've done that, do just fold the pocket and then uh, close it and attach it to the side seam. So it's actually super simple. And I've done a video about that as well, if you're curious on, on the inner <laughs> ways of you do that. So it's actually very, very simple. And then you just um, top stitch the uh, pocket using regular straight stitch I think I've seen sometimes using chain stitch as well and also make sure that you don't do the mistake that I do and use um, too delicate cotton fabric for the lining of the pocket because I've I've had a habit of using some you know old uh, bedding and things uh, but you know that those are really soft and they tend to break uh, I will say that this feels like a mix of polyester and cotton in, in the lining of the Lee, the Lee pocket. So that's probably much better. So if you can find a kind of fabric that is a bit, a bit stiffer, that's probably a much better idea than the one that I did. Uh, but next time I'm, I'm going to use a, a better fabric for the pockets. That's just another tip. Learn from my mistakes. And... Um, Another thing that is good to know about making your own jeans uh, to look as professional as possible is that if you have a cover stitch machine, you can actually make the belt loops using the cover stitch machine because that's how it's done in the stress of use a belt loop folding attachment. Uh, but you can also do them just pressing uh, and that just folds uh, the, the belt loop and stitches over just using I think a regular wide cover stitch uh, two needle cover stitch and inside is actually you can see the the looper thread of the cover stitch and that's how you do it in the industrial setting but you can also of course use a regular straight stitch and just um, uh, finish the edge with a regular zigzag stitch or if you want to make it as similar as possible but don't have a cover stitch machine you can also uh, overlock the edges using I think perhaps the the three thread um, overlocks wide overlock stitch you will achieve a very similar finish and then you just stitch with your regular sewing machine um, there are lots of different ways to do that but if those are the ones that look the nicest either with us with the overlock uh, edge or the uh, cover stitch now again who will look inside the belt loop? Probably no one. So don't feel self-conscious about if you just have a regular zigzag stitch because obviously it won't show. But if you're like me and I want to try to make them look a bit more um, professional, that's uh, that's a good tip to to bring out your serger or your cover stitch machine for the belt loops. Uh, let me see what else. Yes, my by far my biggest struggle when it comes to making my own jeans is actually achieving uh, a nice inside of the waistband now i think i've managed to solve that problem somewhat as you can see i don't do think that this uh this is the jeans that i've made myself i do think it looks quite nice on the inside and the reason why it looks quite nice on the inside is because i have begun using my favorite little <laughs> notion uh my little helper which is double side wonder tape uh it's, this is sold by many different brands so you can find it pretty much everywhere i think this brand is prune but as i said you can it's it's available during a lot of different brand names and what it is is that it's a double-sided tape 
that you attach. And I'm going to show you a slide here again so you can see actually it works because I've done a tutorial about that as well. Um, let me see here if I can pick that up. Yeah. So I'm going to show you just how that how easy it is. Uh, and um, so what you do is that you just um, attach the tape at the edge of the inside of the line, uh, the waistband, and then you just fold that in, and that will keep it in place. It will keep it from slipping. All those annoying things that can happen when you're trying to stitch a waistband. I use this for all my trouser making these days because I got so so sick of. Um, not getting a nice even waistband on the inside and you can see this up close now as you can as i talked about previously i used um, navy thread in the bobbins so uh, any uneven stitching won't show so that's another tip of course but i will say that i think this looks quite nice and i can take no credit for that myself it's all due to the wonder tape <laughs> so if you're like me and struggle and I've tried hand basting I've tried glue and uh, I just tried you know manipulating with my fingers and of all the things I've tried so far the wonder tape has been my best friend so uh, definitely highly recommend it it's wonderful to sewing with knits as well because the, I forgot to say another great thing about this is that it water soluble right i think i pronounced it right uh water soluble so when you wash the jeans the tape will disappear so it won't stay and so it won't affect the feel of the the trousers anything like that so i think you really will like that one and we have more some wonder tapes fans in the chat as well howard says the wonder tape has become my best friend it's also good for placing patch pocket before so that's another great idea especially if you're doing jeans as well Use this wonder tape for the patch book. Thanks, Howard, for the tip. I will try that next time. I usually base them, but I think wonder tape is even better. And Laura says, I love wonder tape. Helps me with zips. Yes, that is another great way. Because when I made my first sort of um, professional looking jeans back in 2009, I used glue to keep uh, the zipper in place. But I will definitely use wonder tape this time instead because I just find it so much better. Uh, another thing that I do struggle with, but hopefully I can become better on that, is the um, getting a nice looking buttonhole. So if you have any tips on how to do that, uh, please share in the comment section. But it is actually comforting. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see, but uh, on the Lee jeans, it looks a bit messy as well. So I'm not feeling too self-conscious about it. I know that, uh, I f at least I think in the garment industry, they use special machines just to stitch the buttonholes. Uh, which is probably why they can look so good but but luckily this one doesn't look as good um, also I'm personally a big fan of using um, a waistband that is curved and I'm, I would like to the guys in the chat please chime in as well if, if that's true for you as well or if you prefer the more rectangular waistband so uh, I think these days most jeans patterns will actually come with a curved waistband, but that's definitely something to be mindful about. Um, but it's, if you look at a lot of red May jeans as well, including the Lee ones, this is actually also a round waistband. You see it's actually cut slightly on the bias. And the reason why that is more preferable than using like a rectangular piece is that it shapes the body much better. Plus, since it's cut slightly on the bias, it has a tiny, tiny little bit of give. So it will sort of remain that uh, light stretch that is so nice to have, you know, <laughs> because after you're eating a big meal, you don't want to feel like your stomach is being strangled by the waistband, right? So I'm definitely a big fan of curled waistband. So if your favorite jeans pattern doesn't have one, I would consider getting one. It's really good for any type of curves and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's a great um, way to just make jeans more flattering and more comfortable. Mm. let me see what else do i have to cover um let me see here and also if you want to use the chain stitch uh, on your cover stitch machine i've i've took a took a look at uh, some of the jeans brands including i think it was calvin klein jeans they actually use um a contrasting thread in the looper uh, I think it was actually Woolen Island. It was quite decorative. So they were working a lot with the insides as well. I think they had like a red thread on the inside of the jeans. So that's something you can 
add and make it a bit more fun. Um, what I personally struggle with uh, when I am stitching beans on my home sewing machine is the attaching um, the belt loops because that's when you know the, the layers of fabrics becomes a bit too much sometimes uh, when I need to do this sort of narrow six axis. So if you have any ideas, please share in the chat on on your fairness tips of, of making this process smoother if you're if you have a regular sewing machine that isn't perhaps that powerful when it comes to um, stitching through a lot of thick lace, that's especially problematic if you're using more thick denim. Uh, I think I did an okay job here on the um, the jeans that I made a couple of years ago, but uh, when I look close, I'm like, um, perhaps not. Uh, and another tip that I learned uh, when it comes to hemming jeans, uh, as I said, there are basically two ways to do it in the structural way. You either use a, a regular straight or lock stitch machine that you do, and or you use the chain stitch. But in the wonderful podcast Sewing Out Loud, which I highly recommend if you're a sewing nerd like me, they actually had another tip that is I think is useful when you're doing those um, stovepipe super skinny jeans uh, where the hem is, you know, has is so narrow it sort of it barely goes um over the foot which is a popular style obviously and when you're doing that you will probably use a very stretchy fabric and those behaves a little bit different so you have to have a stitch that also stretches with the hem when you're pulling it over the foot and they recommend that you use the three step um straight stitch or the three step security stitch which uh, i think most sewing machine has mine from the 80s has one and even my the sewing machine i had before the who's corner viking also had that stitch and that was from the early 70s so i definitely think that you will find it on most of your sewing machine it's it's usually like um it looks like three rows of stitches on the display so you will probably find it there and they suggest using that because that stitch is a wonderful stitch with has a lot of stretch and if you look don't look too closely it actually it looks very similar to a regular straight stitch but if you look closely you will see that there are actually stitches going back and forth so if you're doing that kind of super skinny jeans i would definitely recommend that you try that one and i can credit the sewing out loud uh, mallory and cd for recommending that i'm not trying it myself because i, I usually don't uh, stitch those stovepipe jeans myself but for instance ginger jeans they seem to have a very tapered hem and it probably is a good idea to use that stitch and we have got some suggestions now for how to uh, being able to stitch to all the, th the thick layers Laurie says would using a walking foot be helpful with having multiple thick layers I don't know I've not tried it but that can be worth examining and Greg says perhaps using a microtex needle well microtex needles are also really good um, when it comes to stitching to difficult lace and speaking of needles that's another topic i want to address now i've i they're over there somewhere but i always use a dedicated jeans needles and my favorite brand is schmetz i think it's also called your notion sometimes it's a great brand that works on most sewing machine models um and i usually they usually come in two sizes i think size 90 and size 100 and uh I think when I'm top stitching, I like to use the 100 just to make sure that I get through all the layers. So I definitely recommend that. I'm, I know there are also smash also do um, top stitching needles, which is also done to th uh, so thicker, thicker layers. And they have an extra big um, uh, eye in the needle. So it's easier to get through those heavy top stitching threads. So that's another recommendation to see if you have a top stitching needle brand for your machine as well. Uh, I know obviously there are other systems than the, the, the one that Smet support, but it's a great brand. And Sikipa, why not a jeans needle? Well, um, I use a jeans needle for the most part. Uh, okay, maybe you asked that from Greg, uh, excuse me. But for my case, I use a jeans needle for most seams and then a top stitching needle sometimes when I'm, I'm sewing with thicker thread. But Mikitex needles could be good as well because it's a very durable needle, so it can be worth examining. This is something, what happens is that the bobbin thread seems to get sort of messed up and a, 
bit jumbled about that. Uh, if you have any more questions about jeans making, please sh tell me in the comment this section in the chat because I I would love to try my best to answer them. Uh, and also, if you're making jeans, what is your favorite jeans pattern? Do you have one? And please share as well so I can read them up. Because uh, I think there is definitely an increased interest in jeans making. And I will say that I think we as home sewers can come pretty close uh, into making our jeans as, um, how shall I say, as, as professional looking as we want. Because there is so much information out there today on how to achieve this. And it was more difficult in the past, I think, because the, the homemade jeans had a bit of a different aesthetic than the, the industrial made jeans. And just uh, another thing, uh, and that is, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, I'm sure that if Google will help you with this, is that there's a, basically a big science on on how to position the patch pocket and uh, how they um, should be sized, how they should be shaped to accentuate uh, different uh, body types, basically. I am not an expert of that topic, but I think it's, if that's something you're interested, that could be a hole to, to go down and examine. Because um, I think it's actually, uh, it, can, it can alter things quite a bit. And I am sure there are a lot of sites talking about that, how different placement can, you know, make your butt look bigger or smaller, rounder and, and whatnot. So that's another tip, I think, that uh, you can also obviously be able to custom if you're doing your own pair of jeans just making the patch pocket that will work best with what sort of look you're trying to achieve and um laura says do you use a rivet press to add rivets uh, i just use um, the uh, tools that is included with the rivets i buy in sweden it's basically just a little uh how shall i put um, uh, it's basically just a little clamp and then you use a hammer to attach them so i don't have like a proper rivet press i find that the hammer and the attachment that comes with the rivets works quite well i do think that there's perhaps better quality rivets and less quality rivets uh, so that could be something to examine as well but i i just use a hammer and the attachment that it comes and uh silk process do hammer seams as a go no i haven't tried that but that's something i will examine especially Perhaps that will solve my problem with the belt loop attachment and, and sewing through all the thick layers on my domestic machine. So I will try that next time. And Laura says that hammering is a good uh, tip. I use that technique in some of my bag making. And because what you do uh, always when you're sewing is to try to minimize the bulk as much as possible. So hammering, I will try that one. Thank you for the tip. And now. If you don't have any more questions, I am going to do my little quiz and uh, I will try to explain. It's, it's the most simple quiz I could think <laughs> and it's two parts and there's basically two prizes. So two questions, two prizes. And the first prize uh, for the first question is a print copy of my book Sewing Activewear. And how can you win this? Well, I will show you an image and you will tell me what this is called. And the first one in the chat who answers correctly will win this book. And the second prize is the uh, a print copy of my upcoming book about cover stitching. Now, this book will not be done uh, in quite a while. It's planned for release next year. So you know that you won't get your, your print copy magically appear very soon because that will take a little bit of time. But I will make sure that you get your print copy once it's done. And hopefully it will be in the spring of next year. So those are the rules. They're quite simple. And I will um, write your username down. And then you you when you... <laughs> To make this sort of work, uh, I'm going to show you now how you will be able to contact me just to explain this. I hope I don't make this too complicated. Uh, I've, I've just... Um... So if... So if you're the first one, you just head over to the About uh, tab. It says OM here, but that's because it's Swedish. It's the About tab on my YouTube channel. And then there is a, a grey uh, 
speech bubble, which is a private message, and you just uh, click that one and just share your uh, your postal address info so I can send you the book. And if that doesn't work, you can also email me. And that is also described in the about tab here, which says om here. But you click, it says about on who, or whatever your language is, it will be on about tab. So that's very, very simple. I, I hope you, you understand the the layout of this competition. And uh, so I'm about to start now. I would just prep and just check the chat. And we're going to start now with the activewear book. And I'm going to see now if I can put out the slide here so you can see the image. So are you ready? I will now show you a picture and you will tell me what this is. And I'm referring to the uh, piece in the middle. This is a common technique used in sewing to add more ease. So if you tell me that in English, what it's called, you can win my book Sewing Activewear. So hopefully we'll see someone in the chat now. Uh, I will keep my pen ready to keep track of it. Yes, Sarah, you won. You were the first one to, to be correct. You said gusset. So Sarah Cassins, congratulations. Uh, you will have this book uh, in the mail in the future. It will take a little bit of while because it's with ordering and stuff, but just contact me on the about praise uh, for the private message. And, but there are lots of people answering the right question here. Gusset, 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 so nice. I wanted to make it semi, not super easy, but too, because a lot of people uh, are not English speaking. So we ha always have to think one step ahead and also translate because we also know it in our native language. So I'm really impressed with you guys. Congrats, Sarah. And you will receive your copy about the Sewing Active Wear book. Now for question number two, which is my upcoming book, a print copy of my upcoming book, Cover Stitching. That is the thing that comes next here. I'm going to I'm just going to write down Sarah Cousin so I can keep secret. Now, of course, Sarah, uh, because you won in the first, you're not eligible for the second part here. So we can give another person a chance to win. Uh, so are you ready? Um, I'm going to put the slideshow out here. And this question, I want to know what is this? technique called this technique to finish seams what is it called do you know that please tell me in the chat and i will see what goes on here very exciting it's a bit of a delay so <laughs> yes duncan allen congratulations you were the first one to give the correct answer it's Hong Kong finishing. Fantastic. So Duncan, in next year, you will have a very signed print copy of my book about cover stitching. You're fantastic. And there are lots of correct people here. Congratulations to everyone. You're really fast and you know your stuff. So really cool to see. So that was my sort of 10,000 celebrating quiz now and uh, Duncan and Sarah you can contact me with a private message and hopefully all that will work out and if not just email me instead um, I'm really excited uh, to show ship those things and I'm very excited that you wanted to participate uh, and um, <clears throat> Laurie asked does your active book include plus sizes no it's not a pattern book actually it's a technique book so it goes in depth about all types of things that comes to sewing active wear, including stitching, what type of fabrics you should use, different techniques, and also a lot of different projects. You can add pockets, hemming, uh, cups with thumb holes, all that stuff. It's, it's, I think it's uh, 200 pages almost uh, of a lot of details, just industrial things. And also if you do a lot of cover stitch, it's actually quite well covered in the book sewing active wear as well. So now you know that. And thank you, Greg says, congrats on, on 10, 
thousand uh, viewers. Thank you so much. That feels absolutely wonderful. I'm really psyched about that. And I'm also so grateful to every one of you who shows up on my live stream, keeps the chat going. You have such a wonderful questions and conversations. So I'm really touched by this. And it's just these live streams actually gives me lots of energy, even though it's actually late at night here in Sweden. But, you know, I give them so much energy just uh, doing these things with you. And uh, Valerio says, congrats, Johanna, thank you so much. And Stefan says, please do more live shows. Interaction is great, thank you. Yes, I definitely, I do one live stream a month, uh, usually the last Sunday each month, but that can change depending on, you know, the rest of my life situation. Oh, Sarah Cassin says, can you please give the book to someone else since I already own it? It's an excellent book. Now I can roll up to the chat now and says, Valerie Nell, are you still in the chat? Valerie Nell, um, because that is, uh, you were the second one to guess the correct word gusset. So Valerie Nell, are you still in the chat? We can uh, switch the book to you. I hope so. Yes, oh, thank you. Excellent, Valerie, congrats. Now, uh, as I said, um, you can contact me on the about page and send a private message. And if that doesn't work, you can use the email is also on my about page on YouTube. So hopefully everything will work well. And obviously I'm everywhere. So you will definitely find me somewhere if, if this contact method doesn't work, but hopefully it does. So just send me your name and your postal info and I will send you a, a, a signed copy of my book. So wonderful, yes. Well, it's time now to round off this chat. I've had a lovely time and I hope that you've learned something new. I have for sure. And I will see you next time in July for another live chat, hopefully, if all goes well. Thank you so much for everyone for showing up. It was super fun and have a great Sunday and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.